Facing thousands of layoffs, the Board of New York's Public Transportation System is holding off on approving a budget in hopes that Congress is going to approve $4.5 billion in federal aid to New York's transit systems. But help to local and state governments is not part of that COVID relief bill. The international president of the Transport Workers Union, John Samuelson, great friend of this show, joins us now to discuss the crisis. Um, right. Great to see you, John, as always. Good to see you, John. Glad to be back. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Just give us a little bit of an update of, uh, of what you're seeing, what your members are facing. So right now, it's as you can imagine, it's an absolutely horrific time for transportation workers um, across the United States in every industry. But in public transit in particular, we have a kind of a desperate situation. Not only has there been a tremendous physical toll uh, due to COVID-19, we have a, we're up to 160 fatalities nationally now. Uh, and one in four New York City transit workers has tested positive for COVID since this wow. pandemic began. Jeez. So a tremendous physical toll, but now the economic fallout from COVID-19 uh, puts the potential of absolute devastation to the working families of public transit across the country. And, uh, and hopefully this is gonna be resolved very shortly uh, with this further stimulus from the federal government, uh, we're confident that it will. So talk to us a little bit about this, John, which is that, as I've seen, if it doesn't come through, what are the consequences going to be? Because from what I've seen, they were talking about one third of MTA workers uh, being cut in New York City. Uh, the proposals I've seen here in D.C. would basically make it like irrelevant to take the metro um, to work. And because of the number of cuts, we're talking about like a third in staff and more. Just lay that out for people, what it means both for their lives, but also for your union. Yeah. So if the federal money does not come, first of all, it's going to trigger massive uh, organized labor confrontations across the country. Workers are going to be in a full scale state of rebellion and rightfully so. It'll be the biggest betrayal ever. Uh, transit work is uh, brought all the essential, other essential workers back and forth during this pandemic, were exposed to harm's way in cities across America, only to be betrayed in this way. It's just not going to happen without a worker rebellion. Now, I, the money will come, uh, I'm confident, but if it doesn't come, this is going to play itself out early next year. And you spoke about the service cuts, 40% of the New York City subway, they intend to slash 50% um, on the commuter rails going into New York City. Across the, in D.C. and San Francisco, cuts that are equally uh, devastating. This is what they planned. And um, riders will never see public transit be the same again, I don't think, if the federal money does not come. Mm -hmm. And so what are you expecting in terms of federal money? And if that money that you're expecting does come through, will that ameliorate all of the cuts that you're fearing here? I think if we get the full amount of money that we're seeking on the public transit side, which is about $32 billion, it, it will likely uh, give us a, a really good fighting chance to avoid this devastation totally. If it comes in at a lesser amount, we'll get through 2021, and the fights that I just described will be deferred into the end of 2021 and early 2022. So it's a very dire situation, and that money must come. And, John, I hear a lot of some Republicans are like, we don't want to bail out badly run blue states, MTA, subway. It sucked for a decade, all that, you know, make New York pay the price and reform its system. What do you have to say to that? I think for decades now, there has been a, a, a visible kind of tangible uh, anti-urban agenda from the Republicans, from most Republicans, mm -hmm. and particularly from Mitch McConnell. I, I think the evidence of that is his his absolute attacks on on municipal and state funding. Now, I think it's it's a on a positive note for the MTA system and for the system in D.C. and San Francisco. State and local money is is not the whole game. There's there's uh, money that's distinct from state and local money set aside for public transit operation. But this brings a, f a further problem because governors like Gavin Newsom in California and Cuomo in New York definitely will. Uh, begin to drain off the money that was going to go into into the MTA in New York, for instance, or into the systems in California. Uh, so once they start draining that money off that was set to go into public transit, it's kind of going to mitigate against the amount of money we got in total in this federal government package that's coming. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to keep our eye on it. Please keep us updated because I know your members have been through hell. You know, we've asked mm -hmm. people to risk their health and their safety and their lives to keep the country uh, running, to keep you always talk about how, you know, your members are keeping frontline healthcare workers able to make it into their jobs. So it is the 
absolute bare minimum that this country could do in return. John, it's always great to see you. Happy holidays. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. Always. always. Coming up, we got another John. This one's John Lear, economist for the Morning Consult. He's going to join us to talk about how the pandemic has disproportionately impacted the poor. That's when rising returns.